All right, talk about fast tuning. It's your boy Matthew. We're here in the Toyota 8886 Rocket Bunny, and right now we have been tuning the Toyota A86. So we just finished putting the tune on. We're not really gonna test drive it. We're gonna be taking this straight onto the track, racing it, and really. This already has the stage 6 add-ons and everything. We already actually inputted the upgrades on most of the level 6s. We have some of the uh, components. So what we is doing is we're just uh, trying to configure and see what's a better tune since the original A86 from KJ's tune was um, kind of offset. Now, I'm talking about the A86 right here now because it's actually a fine production car. It's actually a, a lead car. It's a crew car. It's, it's a pretty fast car. What we want is um is basically air intake and how the car was before. It wasn't really in it with the transmission. It was just heavy. So, we just changed the gears. We added it up, and since the aerodynamics are of a state, we're just going to apply it and see with our transmission if we can just have everything in uh, with components fluid, fluent. That seems about like a set tune ready and racing, my boys. So, what I was thinking is, now that we have this 86 uh, properly tuned, I'm not sure if we are up to state with the racing demand on the stage two for qualification, but we can try racing them. We're not. Not at all. Taking the Corvette out for the streets. Okay, okay. Now, my Corvette is having two or upgrades added, but it's not really as clear as to how we want to tune it for the gear ratio. But usual, we're going to apply it with some semi slick tire that's going to give it um, some grip at least. Because what we're doing is we're going to be having a race vehicle uh, set out on aerodynamic uh, angles. So we're really going to just want to push the pedal on the metal. So of course with that, the, it, the Corvette alone already has camber, which can kind of offset it. It's super light, so it's not going to be as aerodynamic. So even to put it, we're just going to have it better with the air and tire because it's just going to have a little bouncy uh, look on it, uh, more roundness. So it's applied. 
that's really what we're trying to go for. We don't have much on the upgrades that I say, but <clears throat> for now we are kind of set middle with a high standard on the engine and how it's applied right now. We're here racing the new song. Oh, we kind of missed our shoes. We lost that one. I do want to notify that this car is pretty quick and good on demand but we don't really want to have this car really seizing on us even to say how the acceleration is now we have to apply more than just the standard and we're not just having it all we need better tires we'll have the transmission upgrade as for what we have we just need a turbo installment but we're gonna go ahead and upgrade this baby and see what we can do fitting it in We have our own very A86 here, all tuned. Uh, we did apply a new paint job. <clears throat> and you can see here we have just about almost every upgrade. So I'm gonna show you what's a proper 86 and as to what we can do also. Uh, we do have almost, almost all the upgrades. So what we would want is an intake upgrade, fully maxed out, uh, stage 6. We do want to see us having the horsepower, but we don't really need much. We can even lower this. We do have the pistons. Um, turbo as for state. It's actually pretty state uh, suitable. So we don't really need much, even with the clamp that we have that screws on at the front. Uh, we don't really want to put it on because it's just the uh, covering air uh not, not really covering air but at, like how we would have it is that it, with the air tubing it's gonna kind of be pressured and not give us the full air that we want So we're gonna go ahead and race this A86. It's actually in a fine color. I'm not going to lie. We have black rims. We have uh, black calipers. Uh, as for customizations, this is the best I'm gonna have it. This is the best I'm gonna have it. We can want the race, my dudes. I want to try and find another 86 and race up against it. Speaking of which, Ramsey, Ramsey, you're a lucky winner today. Supporting B Movie. It's an anti pollen. I'll call him anti pollen.
All right, talking about the vehicles in general, what we want and how we like to apply power is, is to kind of get a optimum of how our car can work. Uh, really, we work around the the gesture of how fast the car can go. And what we do see, want, and go for is the cutting through edge and working power. So... Um, every time I do go for a race, we do have, um, um, uh, much to kind of have in hand, even to say we don't even look for how we want the car, f uh, fully drive. So what I mean by that is, uh, a rev limiter, it doesn't always have to be putting on of the full power. So we can do as much power to wh where we want to state it, really. We can do almost a certain amount uh, of low rev, but then it all depends on the camshaft and the power put in, input it. So, um, each piston does a, a, a due to camshaft would have a spacer of how much uh, fuel was already lodged into the piston creating power so uh, the high uh, high rotation to there you don't have to almost have a high amp Once we are actually driving, we can start up on how much uh, power we can have to the car. So even with the air and pushing us back, we have to even, uh, even know how much power we can put or else the car will overheat. But I will show you how much power is really good even to this car. I just don't suggest having it super low. So multiple red, you can... Slow down your rev uh, at time when you're on takeoff, but you're not gonna really want to have the power as to just judge the whole track itself. Mm, not full rev. Here's the uh, under rev and here's max rev that we can put in to have the car actually choke in front which actually most car uh, people that do race that I know here in this game uh, actually launch the car faster than most cars or most other racers. Uh, that's just showing that you're, you're going to have a better takeoff. That's kind of what we did here. The 80, A86 doesn't show uh, as for how much power it can be put in, but we, we are able to have the car a able to launch. Here we're gonna go for a max uh, rev. Now that I've showed you the push factor of uh, how much the car can go in with a transmission and short gear range, uh, I'm going to apply now how much the car can actually go into taking.
Now, in the components, you can actually uh, see that the car is a, of a full working matter and can actually hold air intake and turbo. It is going to help us with the long run of the fifth and fourth and third transmissions. But what we do look for is really just a better rev. Um, the applying rev we can do, uh, we can see on the Ferrari that it's a V6 that has a long camshaft and then it's a mid-engine vehicle it doesn't have a uh, engine in the front which actually uh, gives a different function when racing um, mostly about the car what we can and uh, will be able doing in so is when racing we can have the car with a gearing transmission that will justify the whole engine and uh, how we can actually have a car in working. So here we have the dial. I always change up the, the dial most often um, when trying to get a specific gear to the degree because it's not always going to be the, the full power. Here testing on launch, we only have the final drive with the upgrade and then we have lightweight. It's not even to apply how much power can be put in. This is all full engine, no turbo that would actually make a difference. So what we do have is a full engine mount and upgraded with the drip pen. But we can also apply the air intake to keep up the car cool. And here we are running the Ferrari, making a quick justification that it's going to have a launch power that usually isn't a, as a preset. But uh, with what we did is that we're going to have a longer gear ratio. And then in the first gear, the power is going to be more strained. So here we actually did better than the other uh, quarter mile that we had. 107, 157.63, that is uh, about, um, let me get a justification, uh, like, uh, two seconds difference, almost to the 0 0.2, 0 0.1 ratio, so, um, what I mean by that is because of a car's uh, amp, we do different ratio, and what we have is uh, 57 miles uh, better than than the last um, full top, top out at the quarter mile. So taking that with how we do launch, launch can all, always strain the timing per second, which can also change up uh, how fast the car can get up to speed. What we do usually is uh, differ in the gear ratio to a later or earliest shift um, before the car would have a um, a stall. Um, on stalling, we don't really uh, ask for much uh, uh, except for that the gear ratio was handled and, a, and the lighter gear is uh, audible. So with this gear ratio, the first gear is actually handled uh, but can be justified uh, and to add on, the car is just going to be lightweight in all costs. Um, what, what we will show is what happens if the car wasn't getting enough power, but would still run with the first gear, uh, having no burnout. So the 4th to 5th gear, we changed it a bit early on the uh, rev limiter from right after 6 because we wanted to have of the, the contrast to at least apply power but then still keep in a head race of 
how the car can handle on its own to a timing. Um, what we do is that even to the car, the the timing would have for a Ferrari of like a normal track vehicle or just speeding to to have the top high speed is that uh, re really that the car is gonna have overpower or due to how much uh, installments you do have in the car that the power is not uh, able to apply so you have to oh no it's gonna have uh, more upgrades uh, based on the upgrades that you do have it's gonna have either of the race speed of a normal ferrari that can have a, a track timing of its normal time that's when uh if you see on the in, in, when you tune for example the dyno tune when it asks the full gray usually means that it'll have the normal uh, uh high acceleration to make the rev but i like to do the the normal test run because it actually shows better on uh on your part when you're driving the vehicle there's also the high speed timing where you can do head timing uh usual is when you can have a perfect launch uh based on how much tire was actually getting traction how much tire traction is actually applied we can also see of a vehicle and how much the timing difference is on gearing not versus the whole track length itself as i as i mean that is like you settle the car for <clears throat> a full power to your first and second gear not first and second but to have a rotation versus on how much amp you can put in for the camshaft on rotating and what we do think is that uh when you have all four tires on the ground you're gonna have a launch that's gonna either have of more more traction or just the heads up on how much the axle length to the wheel rotating can be applied So to say most, in other words, when running the vehicle, it is going to have a, a, a different amount that can be applied. So the, the traction is going to have handle and then you using your gears, you're going to have a gear shifting that's going to apply force through the air. Alright, yeah, so well, we're talking about that, no no full range of uh, car horsepower is really going to hold itself up to a straight half mile. You'd rather have a good amount of power that wouldn't blow out your engine and overuse your fuel. Uh, now with what we do do is that we control the car's amount of of hold stability hold stability to uh, of power to transmission is a uh, gear shifting so that's why i have a reason why i do shift gears pretty uh, early in time now to talk about really of our car's speed and why we can go quick is is on factor of the engine Here's a good production vehicle that holds its uh, engine compatibility because of its uh, piping standard to have a, a good ratio uh, of horsepower put in. You also need the oil pan that would also refuel based on its size, bigger or small. You're not really going to say how much 
you can control the car too but uh, most people do install modded or uh, engine swaps so in doing that you're switching out a whole engine for other for other reason to handle a, a transmission i don't really like doing that not at all not even like saying you can do that in this game but uh because depending on size to how much your pistons do hold you can uh justify how much a car really does on horsepower <clears throat> on a rotation for you for your camshaft you can't really control how much how much of the uh, uh, a setup that the car can put in and, and diverse all the uh, usage of fuel and into the drip pan really the car doesn't really handle uh, as well depending even if your if your transmission uh, was a stock transmission and along with a engine you wouldn't really tell how much the power was already in it because the car can change its power based on the drip pan and from that if it's bigger or smaller the drip pan usually okay with this because it's it, it could this uh drip pan really would show of uh, of how much power can be stated of uh, if it if it's bigger than a usual car a car's drip pan what you can say to tell is the height off the car uh height height off the the axles the middle so in retrospect this gr supra does have a semi normal size to almost a quarter of a centimeter or so bigger as to its power you can talk about really the the engine power is a bit most because of its v6 it's gonna have almost a bit extra added on weight because of fuel and uh, of the movement inside and on moving on with the 886 its drip pan might be wider now that does affect as to how you can handle a car uh, because when if it's wider or, or thinner that that's pretty unable clear to be clear on how you can actually control your car this 86 does have a small piston piping and as for drip pan it can be wider but it's almost uh, as same size for a standard uh, drip pan that you would usually have held in a car just like the super snake it would have of a normal standard uh, drip pan but what we what I do like is mostly that the car when it's handleable is that you can tell that the drip pan would be of almost a rectangular prism size but not as wide uh, that's a defect but uh, it's shown that in this super snake that it is actually better to hold a power and keep the combustion uh, mass varied versus the A86 my favorite car really to use most often and even uh, in scripts or inscribe is the Camaro as for say the Camaro does have smaller pipes than usual size but only to a millimeter and then the the oil is a bit smaller which actually makes it in retrospect a race vehicle not really as to say it, it's a race more is handled on how even the car is uh made by factory so we do have an ominous shape for the Camaro and I can say that the edges are actually sleek on point on its fall curvature so air is always falling down my guys 
what I, what I mean by that is it falls straight down at the front of the intake it falls straight in on sides it can fall almost uh, slightly off and it'll form shape around your car but because the car pushes through the air it, it's almost varied <clears throat> so we are going to be using the Camaro today and showing it how really the, the Camaro's power is used and then what's variant about the car are its trajectory on standard for of uh, the engine cooling and air intake which makes an abstract uh, use for the engine and reason I say that is because the axle length is very different, varied different, and is shown a bit off of length to be longer. Here we can be setting up the races for ourselves, but you can see that most of these engine types are of a V6, V4 cylinder, almost, almost. So, like a competitive challenge of vehicle is some somewhere more aerodynamic. Like we can, as as for say, talk about how quick the Porsche 911 is. It's just an aerodynamic specialty uh, and uses its power more to of the lightweight transmission. It can be uh, more better for the car just because it has a shorter gear ratio, but actually depends your uh, transmission to axle length. So from from that, there's a latency that actually get, gives off a different variant on why the car is just so high tolerance. Uh, here we have a BMW M4, M3, sorry, and the engine is V6 and it has a bigger drip pan, which actually is a pretty useful conduct to say that even with its smaller pipe in interior, that it can still handle of a, of a power into into. Oh, dude, I can't believe it. This Beamer would actually probably bleep, beat me, as for say. Uh, and, and tolerance, this car is actually of a better construct, which is inverted from the M3, the coupe. And makes it a speed trajectory vehicle. And it, its use is actually better for, like, in talking perspective as a daily vehicle is more as a race type such as the Camaro which would make it a competitive vehicle just as so as, as this Audi that we race like I said uh, the Camaro does have smooth edges but it's not as round bitted as the uh, Audi. So the trajectory of winds obviously going to shape around the car differently. Here we go in racing. Uh, in racing, the track vehicle specialty would usually be its tire traction. But here on a straight where we are testing out the Camaro, which would not be of a drag vehicle unless it was pretty heavy set with the level 6 upgrades usually.
here we've actually upgraded the Ferrari. Uh, and we have actually uh, changed up a bit of the gear ratio. I forgot if how much the gear ratio is either more to have add-on uh, gesture versus uh, a usual set of gears that would just have uh, equal distance to apply on the range uh, or which how the horsepower would set up to have into the gear ratio the let off of how fast or controlled your car can go into speed So two as for say our minor upgrades we did apply were air intake implement just so that we could have a stronger hold so that uh, air leaks are not even uh, visible or defective. Our next upgrade probably would strengthen the vehicle as to say because uh, really in this state we can almost use of tire traction or the gear ratio is already in set so the upgrade for that would only lighten the vehicle and uh, uh, really what we would want is uh, the traction or a lighter stance from the point of view we can upgrade an engine and this is actually uh, to state how much the engine can use as power so it's not lighter it adds pound but what what mixes in is that this for this upgrade the rotation is actually more settled and can have stability to continue on using a straight a stride we can implement a turbo we can add in intake again but this intake is just lengthening the tubing system which is only gonna provide of how how air is gonna be cleaning smooth through the piping versus how a bocce air system uh, as how we have it it doesn't really makes any difference because we have the implement of the turbo so as for that we would upgrade turbo uh, just because the turbo is more actually used in suction from that it's from the ability that we actually had already usage of a of how angle trajectory through inside the pipes can be used so this is actually already using of a clear strength as, as to say with the nos the nos upgrade level uh, stage 3 uses this uh, small piping uh, resonation which actually just gives uh, a push inside the tubing system but is a thinner blowout which is the same implement which would be used in in what we have here because uh, even to joust that we do have the acceptable tubing we have a short routed system with the bigger system it's going to make a faulty with a bocce air with a turbo system upgrading it is going to leave room for air to clump up so with nos the upgrade system of the tier two tier three is actually just going to identify of the the propulsion in how much uh, power can also be put into the engine how much nos is put into the engine and it, it said it stated that it's just a clear uh, of a strip of air that gets pushed pushed versus the intake suction and and usage now 
from earlier we did end up using cash to get cash to upgrade our 4c spider which isn't is in doubt it is not as good but with upgrade with upgrade is not even applied so what we did do was we bought a turbo upgrade from the last fitment and and that one didn't work so we were just finicking with it we we bought a turbo actually to get the spool ready so that there was more air so any of these two that we do have the stage two qualification varies between the stock because it's just a, a holds a turbo that is just extra air that can go in and it has open tubing this one has of course the extended extender which makes uh, more room but can also just defy the whole car and make it heavy along with a uh, not usable in section we do have the upgrade fitted with the cpu installment which actually enhances the the drip pan or the exhaust outlet and enhances more of a diagnostic to use with the stage three uh, ro rotary uh, terminal nothing as fancy but it does uh, help out more to uh, let the car know that it's not going to overheat but would make a better diagnostic to gear shifting to hold its purpose that's what we have in here now i do want to work on the tier 2 vehicle we do have an audi tier 2 and we do want to rank up so what we do think usually is the gear shifting which i don't think is going to take long to even stay how much power we can put we customize the car because what we want to talk about is the car itself not because of its shape also to add in that tires are heavy but we can talk about the color some colors are spray on some colors are almost of a, a full thick layer vary from different cars the black i can tell you it is different it's actually more of a heavy color versus this blue which goes on more smoother than usual car paints along with it we have a matte versus the gloss carbon hood which is different because it it's a carbon on matte matte is just of a, a flat texture it's not really as thick as glossy paint we have upgraded the Rocket Bunny Corvette Stingray to show you um, what I have. Uh, I'll show you later in a time moment. For now, we're going to up <clears throat> up the tunage to see what we can do on the Corvette. Now we actually don't have any tuning uh, upgrades to actually use as for um, better self uh, exemplify the vehicle. We just have a normal strat which on, only applies to the, the rotation of the gearing. We only have the extra gearing with a flywheel we're gonna install install that so that's settled as for what we can can do is that we can have a better launch just because the the flywheel 
in, in itself is going to be of a heavy heaviness to our car. And even to say in motion, it's going to be already in motion, so the car wouldn't have any defiance. I mean, here we can race this Mustang. Sure, we can. I wouldn't really race the Mustang. It's just not my favorite type of car to race. Especially this one right here, Rocket Bunny uh, Specialty. It's just that that great of an engine. It's the supercar. It's challenging to the supercar. And what we have is a drag sport. Goodies and mass. So I'm just saying we're going to have some fun racing the Corvette on its own. But here we have the older generation Stinger versus the new for uh, Chevy, I mean, Corvette. So we're, we're going to be racing it. Let's do this. Okay, that would have been almost a perfect launch. That that was perfect launch, but the car is just as heavy, like I said. There's not much we can do. I mean, really, the car is great on its own. It just needs a stop start uh, with no tire burning. That's a very different. Man, I was kind of really hoping it'd be at least a close, close winner's circle. But I think what we, what we can do really is just enhance the weight because we do have a gearing transmission that flows with it from the last uh, transmission racing. We we didn't really have the appliance. So in, in this, we only had the setup here. We had the setup here, which was only a, as good as 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 how we we can keep a power. So the heaviness was okay as, as it was, but we have the flywheel. The flywheel it is really just. Uh, oh no, not the flywheel. We have the 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 reduced axle, so that was actually just a strengthened part that we added. But as is before, it was just going to be the gears, which actually is isn't much, but for the transmission. So that's why we have all this tire wheel spin. Now, that's actually a problem with this tunage system that we have. You can actually hear the engine got louder. That was a, that was the affection or affecting problem that the weight distribution and how the car is. That is too heavy, so it can actually over implode on the vehicle. That's bad. It can bust a... a it can bust a piston or ruin your gearing transmission, break the whole thing.
the Evolution Lancer four door. What a great vehicle! Such a great car. What a, what a great aspect of the vehicle four door, and its power is usually uh, under gold, under gold, because it's a four door. The aspect was that we can actually have a car that was going to apply power it has of a different engine stated setup which actually varies the transmission and uh, camshaft ratio we have longer exhaust pipes which actually implement the air so as from stock the car is actually uh, just as good off the lot but in in doing so it, it makes a clear valve system which goes into the engine just as fluid the nissan gtr one one vehicle that really makes a mark on its racing and driving expectations its shape its space and logic of the vehicle what's inside twin turbo intake we also have the camshaft just as applied uh, to make a, a full rotation um, but it's not actually as good now to say that is because the uh, um, the camshaft ability is uh, set up so that it's a spaced out power which actually is noticed very much in my racing with this vehicle that it's, it can't get up to the six speed as quick which actually loses its power it would slow slow down just as we use it but we did upgrade it here in seminar um past seminar just to take up how much power we can have so the the testing was a-okay uh, what we do have and I can show you is my tuning we do have a raised air pressure in our tires our NOS is raised to have a shorter power this can be a uh, vary just on how you like to use it I wouldn't use it past this, uh, this end uh, this high just because it can rush your pistons and you'll have off course set uh, uh, the rotation so what we do like is more nos more nos we have the final drive the final drive is just off putted it's not as uh, as long as the other one we had so it's pretty helpful <clears throat> so what what we do have is that we can actually apply the power and have power at, at least state us to have uh, a better long distance uh, health stability some protogens we have two protogens rarely in rally racing oh wait drag racing as, as, as that and um I only like the Protogen because it is a longer car it sets out its demeanor versus the 4C Spider that we have in the garage and it has a better duration of accelerating because of its long axle There's the extra push in fifth gear we were expecting to have with the upgrade. And we actually have held speed and kept it actually in a better running system than before. So that's actually better. What we did actually have, uh, you'll notice that the car was actually running quickest and not as, as strutted because we actually have a level six part that uh, diverse the whole thing can you guess it 
You got it. It's the transmission level six upgrade. We waited it out. We we've had the installment to wait out for quite a bit some time. And we were waiting up on the final up, upgrade to apply. So that was actually pretty cool. Now that we have a lighter transmission, it's uh, varying the whole car way different now. Now, here we actually have a let off vehicle, the Ford Mustang in a racing spec with the white body and all. Let's see if we can actually beat it. The very, the very difference is that our car really has the first gear setting out that that we're gonna have so much of the wheel spin. It's not gonna have a controlled system, so this car can actually most likely spin out versus the Ford Mustang, which has it has a heavier first gear, but is also more uncontrollable, which actually uh, shows a reputation that most Ford Mustangs do actually have that uh, there is a spin out because of the power is just push push and it's not really a, a power to set on duration ex except for having uh, as a street vehicle versus having it as a super sport or having it a track vehicle which will lengthen the the whole gear setup at first and actually makes no difference on how your acceleration would be or your your weight difference sorry your weight difference would actually have no definition because of the first gear size the teeth uh, would have difference because if they're smaller it's gonna fit more teeth more uh, less likely or uh, depending on the size it will have different uh, different reaction but first gear is just as heavy when you have the stock gear uh, for upgraded gear even to change it up it will be different just because <clears throat> the the wheel is heavier and you do need to make room for all the other gears uh, as to say other gear the other gears would have a a different defiance because it's gear ratio would need a, a better timing situation in situation I can do a quick tune-up uh, because the car has been used already as we've already been using it and that we can apply the, the engine uh, we've been overrunning the rotation not quite the pistons so pistons are intact but would be different because of its rotation uh, when it's overused um, uh, what an expectation is that your car is just going to be uh, less used versus overused when it's overused it's just going to be out outworked so when using it to to the wheel spinning and how we have it uh, it's basically showing that the car is just not having the rev mount and the one way to fix that is revving your engine. So, as for say, your your car when revving the engine, you rev the engine, it's making a rotation stronger or just an implement to make to the gear shifting or to the to the gear shift. So I'll show you what happens when on the first run when we use uh, four power our four power we have a better takeoff which is actually that but when it's un underused for of power 
you're not it's not really unless you're racing the takeoff isn't the the difference is that it's not going to be as strong to throw into a gear i'll show you now how we use it or how how in a regular use if it's not noticed what happens when your car is revved and it's on a low rev so right after this it'll show a very different now we do get up to speed but e even though okay we heard the car was getting louder that is making uh the rotation of how much power can be in inside the car when being used so now when we using it we we can use it but the car is just going to show a different offset of how high of rotation rpm can be as used So now you hear it, you can actually see the car would be struggling. So that into the camshaft would be highly affected and can ruin your car more so. As I was saying, what we were doing with the gearing transmission, we actually lengthened the gear. We lengthened the gear and it was mixed up on, on how much power was already in the car. We overused it so it probably had loose um it had uh, loose struts which uh makes an uh, an effect when even to use the normal gears that we did have it was already under met be uh as from that because the power would be overset to the to how much power was already going to be used so cam camshaft is the power that that is getting used and then the pistons is the power of how much can be put in so here i'll show you what what's the correct way to have the horsepower to set up your gearing trans uh camshaft your camshaft to do gearing way better so here's just how much the power we can put in and well the, the game started the car already but as that the car was all already straining on on onto the gears so the camshaft wasn't as strong to push up against the gear so with that we are going to be using uh now to even it out we're going to be doing more of the of the pedal to the metal but at, into acceleration we're just going to even it out but then apply more power so i'll just say on green or not on green but green i'll say green and that's basically the midpoint of what a normal rev could apply to the car green so we just evened out the power ratio to the camshaft not to the drivetrain In running the car, I do like to keep a uh, uh, algorithmic uh, state to gearing ratio and using of at least a limitation of mid high for ro for the power to the camshaft. So in the camshaft, that way, uh, as I said, it it would loosen your your struts inside but it's not really going to ruin the car it's just going to keep it 
uh, steady with using gas norm normality. So that was high terminal from how I usually like to use the the mid center for power usage into it and really I, w I wanted to show you that just because the car can have a strain on how we like to have it now now that we set up with the normal gears we're, we're not actually having the strain now in shifting because of the heavy gears we're, we're using normal gears from our old setup and uh, that's what I li liked to have shown we do have I believe so waiting is a 250 GTO to race and I, I would love racing the 250 GTO and in order for that I really need that like button hit and smashed. Uh, I really want you guys giving the like button and we can be using the 250 and we we can be racing more and more often and restoring more vehicles in this garage. So please subscribe, hit that like button and I hope you guys enjoy the racing. Our tier 2 level for this vehicle is a 389. Now, I really do want to amp it up. Uh, just doing so that way we can start reaching uh, <clears throat> this lead, lead racer battle to finish it off. Uh, race this, this contestant, Ashley. And right now, she's so extreme. We don't know what is the tuning that she uses or what her car uses. But for here, uh, we are needing uh, more upgrades. Definitely. This car does have a implemented gear transmission ratio change up to change, but we have to fully restore the vehicle, which is actually kind of in demand. I need to really restore the vehicle. It's unfair. It's so unfair.
the Ford GT Premium, one of the fanciest of cars to have, just so that uh, how a car is, <clears throat> it does have a greater attitude with the drip pan and small implement of pistons. Uh, of the box, the box pistons. It has a clear intake system, not as long as is. It has an intake system that keeps the car in motion, not in a cooled state. The vehicle itself has racing interior. To add in, it has chrome. The chrome panels leather leather seats and it has the 5.0 it has the wondrous uh mustang logo on the front it has multiple lights and all in well it is a good vehicle to have i have been in one it is a car of need. I am a tall person and I don't fit in most cars. Trunk space is just quite perfect. Now, reason I say that is you find the car, you find it appealing. I find that it's better to have space and axle length uh, not the two go together my guys I do not fit in a Chevy and that thing is hard dude now showing it it does have diffusers as a common uh, use of a vehicle it is the track vehicle set as a race demeanor so I will be having a car just uh, upgraded to its max and you and really I think that car to max out is the Ford Mustang in reality the car is good I don't want it I rather have just the M3 LB it's just that much good of a car and you have height space its axle length is already ready uh, the fitting situation is actually quite good and then interior as for say is just uh, just great you do have semi gloss panels you have the electric dash you do have automatic manual stick shifting it's just my type of favorite car and looky here we have just a great great room trunk space which definitely changes the car's look on how observed beamer makes their vehicle so as that it's just quite as good of a vehicle it's what i'd rather prefer as seeing it with the racing color and everything it's just that good looking of a vehicle versus the ford premium gt well guys that was a great race you saw my tuning for the 302 uh, if most help leave a like if any information was uh, out of place leave a comment below uh, leave a like subscribe to my videos this was Matthew and we're out